to Egypt and Eternity with me, Kelly Siat. This is my part two about how to become an Egyptologist. Now, it's never easy, and sometimes you can't make the academic credentials of actually obtaining the degrees or PhD, but it doesn't mean that you can't be a technical amateur Egyptologist. All it takes is determination and passion, and those two things is what can help you to become an Egyptologist. Just as the ancient Egyptians wanted to have access to all for the knowledge of the underworld and the journey in the Amduat, Egyptology should be accessible to all, whether academic letters or achievements or accomplishments after your name or whether not, whether it's a determined kind of field of passion or it's a career path. Either way, there's different contributions that everybody can make and your interest is very poignant in the development and the further continuation of the field of Egyptology. I've had some lovely comments and feedback on YouTube on some of my videos and I will be doing a follow-up that kind of explains ways that you can carry out research or carry on academically even though you're not in an academic institution and you might not have access to the uh, same type of teaching methods or research um, facilities, but you still have a keen interest in continuing in some way with a kind of an academic base. Um, I will give some references, some resources, possible alternatives, and um, contact information of what you might be able to do if you want to try to pursue it academically on an amateur kind of basis. Um, I don't like using the term amateur because I think everybody has a unique input and a type of analysis that they can do on evidence and viewpoints of antiquity and it's all very pertinent, very poignant, very much um, credible in so many ways to be considered as to the possibilities and probabilities because as you know we cannot necessarily have facts but we can have objects as they are that exist but it takes lots of different kind of uh, perspectives to really put more of a, a theorized context to them. So as I stated before, I'm actually conducting research on ancient Egyptian 18th dynasty Queen T. Um, I'm doing that in light of a different kind of socio-historical approach. Um, it's a theoretical usage and model of how we can approach biographical studies of ancient individuals. Now the update so far is that I'm still pushing along. I've made quite a good progress in revising some elements that were necessary. Um, I'm hopeful to have quite a few of those chapters push forward to kind of just quick review to make sure it's all kind of in order and what they're looking for. Um, it's quite a lot of fun when you get down to it but once again there are struggles and kind of pressures that come from different outlets and sometimes it's really hard to refocus back onto what you're doing. Um, but it can be done and I, I look forward to working on it more and um, it's kind of a holiday weekend at the moment and um, I'm, I'm kind of being inspired by it. It's quite quiet, subdued, um, but at the same time the sunshine's come out and they predicted snow so I think that's a good sign. I might go for a walk, try to help motivate myself just a little bit more, kind of feel fresh and in the mood. And just what I find helpful as well is on those walks, because I live near the countryside, um, even there's a sandy area and we get uh, Sahara sands that come through um, to the UK. And uh, the sandy areas, I'm no doubt, are kind of mixture of the Sahara sand. So hopefully a little bit of Egypt is right at my doorstep. So I'm sure inspiration will come soon. But... I send my inspiration back out to you. I hope I'm helpful. And once again, any comments or queries that you have, please feel free to send them along. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again in my next video.